We are so glad that you've joined us today at North Point Community Church. Hey, I, I don't know where you are, whether you're in Lansing or DeWitt or St. John's, wherever it is, Ovid Elsie, Langsburg, Portland, Holt. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. We're glad that you're here. And it's our prayer that you'll experience God's presence in the next few minutes, that you'll hear his voice and that you'll be able to worship as well. Maybe, maybe this is your first time connecting with us, or maybe it's just been a few weeks. We want to invite you to spend, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes with us on Sunday morning about 1030. Uh, have a cup of coffee with us uh, at a thing we call Second Sunday. It's an opportunity to meet the staff, to get to know a little bit more about North Point in just a really short period of time. And uh, we would love to have you join us. We hope that you'll be able to do that. The link for Second Sunday is in the North Point app. So you can check that out. There'll be more information in just a little bit on how you can download that if you haven't already. But until then, let's go ahead and worship.
Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. I'm Karen. I'm Annie. I'm Annie. <laughs> and I'm Ben Hatler. Uh, we'd like to welcome you on this Mother's Day Sunday. Um, and we'd like to take this opportunity to get you into the North Point app. If you don't have it, you can download it on the uh, Play Store. Uh, if you have a Samsung phone and do whatever you guys do for your iPhones to get your apps. Um, the app is a uh, green and white arrow. Uh, in that app, at the bottom in the middle, there is a Connect tab. If you click on that Connect tab, then... Uh, uh, there's a welcome virtual welcome book uh, available there. At the end of that virtual welcome book, there is two questions. Uh, the two questions talk about uh, if you've dedicated your life to Christ recently, like this Sunday, or uh, or you've rededicated your life. We'd love to know uh, that you're on that path. Uh, with that said, we've all been cooped up and life's a little crazy and the kids are running around. Um, but... Uh, We'd like to take this opportunity on a, on a Mother's Day to uh, show how we've been spoiling our moms. And so if you have any pictures of you spoiling your mom or your kids spoiling you, we'd love for you to post them on the North Point Facebook page. Uh, and when you do that, uh, whoever gets the most likes, uh, we can give a little prize. So from our family to yours, happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Can you say happy Mother's Day? <laughs> <laughs> Happy Mother's Happy Day! Happy Mother's Day! <laughs>
Steve Houston is one of our elders here at North Point. We asked him today if he'd share some thoughts about giving. At this point in worship, uh, we continue to worship by giving our uh, tithes and offerings. Uh, for those of you that have been con continuing to give, thank you for your faithfulness. For those of you who haven't decided how you want to give, we have uh, options available. You can either send your check through snail mail, snail mail to the church office, you can do it online through the app or the website, or you can text to 77977 with the message NCC Give. So three options, snail mail, online through the app or website, or texting. Several years ago, we had a capital fund drive here, and at that time, Nancy and I were living paycheck to paycheck and trying to live within our means. And we were undecided on how we were going to contribute to that. Uh, we prayed about it, and God gave us a pretty sizable amount that uh, he wanted us to, to give. So we looked at uh, where that money could come from, and nothing was coming to mind. And then Matthew 6, 21 came to mind. Where your treasures lie, that's also where your heart is. So our hearts were on laying up treasure for our retirement. And that's what uh, we decided we would give up at that time. So for several years, money that was going into retirement went to the church building fund. And this is no surprise to anybody, I hope, but uh, we are retired now and God is providing for us. We are doing fine. So pray about it and whatever God puts on your heart, trust that he will be faithful and keep his promise and provide for you after we're done worshiping here, you can go outside and continue to worship. Get some sunshine. That vitamin D is good for your immune system, but take a couple of hats <laughs> because you never can tell what the sun or what the weather is going to be. Oh, is that snow over there? <laughs> Have a blessed day. Let's pray together. God, we ask that you would take what's being given today. Um, people are given electronically. It's a, it's a little weird, but God, we ask that you would bless their gifts, the resources that they've put back in your hands, and that you would use those gifts to meet needs here in our area and around the world. Lord, bless the people who are giving. Take care of them. Meet their needs as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, it's Mother's Day. We've got a special treat for you. Take a look. At the beginning of this year, I never would have imagined that this would be our world, 2020. I laughed on New Year's Day and said this would be the year that God would focus our vision. And then, quarantine. 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 COVID-19. COVID-19. Stuck in our houses for weeks on end? Weeks on end. Is this door shutting? Schools closing? for the rest of the year. Essential workers going into scary places that were never scary before. And those essential workers were our people. Our loved ones. The world changed overnight. No hugs, no handshakes. Shop one at a time. Six feet back. Six feet back. But mom, in our homes, there you were. But mom, in our homes, there you were. There you were. There you were. With hugs and kisses that never retreated. Teaching, even if you didn't have a clue how to solve that math problem. Loving, even when you probably just wanted to run away. Cleaning, everything, lots of cleaning. Hiding fears of your own to comfort others. And. I'm sure when no one was looking. You shed a few tears of your own. So I guess my New Year's Day joking did come true. Our eyes have focused. We see clearer. We see you, Mom. And we say in the 2020 vision that you are a blessing. Not just in a pandemic, but every, every single, single day. day. Every, every single, single day. day.
There are a lot of amazing people in this world. Many heroic people have risen out of this crazy time. But some of our heroes have just always been there. We just don't always notice them clearly. But just so you know, today, we see you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And we're thanking God for you. For you. For you. For you. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. North Point, how are we doing this uh, Saturday night or Sunday morning or whatever you're jumping on to check this out? Uh, I just want to say uh, it really is a privilege to get to speak to you this morning as a DeWitt uh, Township Police Department Chaplain. I know that's kind of funny because uh, that's not always the title we start with, but uh, that's kind of how I'm coming this morning. And I'm excited to get to talk this morning because t t today, Sunday, if you're watching this on Sunday starts a week called Police Week, and it really is a week designed to honor law enforcement. This is what a group called Police Week Michigan, this is how they phrase it on their website. They say, in 1962, President John F. Kennedy established seven days out of the year to honor and celebrate our law enforcement in America. During Police Week, all over the United States, people do something to show their gratitude to law enforcement and their families. Whether they gave their lives in the line of duty, left behind a family who still mourn, whether they have retired or whether they continue to serve, Michigan citizens owe a debt of gratitude to the men and women in law enforcement. It's fitting that we take a moment to go out of our way to stand up, speak up, and show up to let them know that we appreciate them. As grateful, law-abiding citizens who appreciate peace and safety, it's time we go above and beyond to say thank you to all those who represent this important community. Let it be known from shore to shore, from bay to bridge, from the UP to the Lower Peninsula, that Michigan citizens are proud to stand up, speak up, and show up in support of Michigan law enforcement. We're a better state, we have safer communities, and better lives because of the service and sacrifice of these brave men and women. At North Point, I want to challenge you to do something to honor police sometime this week. It might be as simple as just uh, taking a few moments of a day to thank God uh, for the law enforcement that you know. Maybe praying for them by, by name if you know some law enforcement, law enforcement families. Uh, police Week Michigan, a, a local organization of events, has a whole webpage dedicated to ideas and this concept. And we'll put the link for that at the bottom of the app notes. So hopefully you have the, uh, the, 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 the app downloaded on your phone. And in the bottom of that, we'll put a link to that website and you can check out some more ideas. But here's a couple just to get you thinking right now. Number one, maybe just take a day this week to pray for law enforcement. That seems really simple, but I know that they appreciate that, to know that there are men and women just praying for them, for their safety, for their mental health, especially in the current uh, climate we're living in right now. Here's another idea. If you're a parent, maybe you just take a minute this week to talk to your kids about the importance of law enforcement and that God-given role. Maybe use verses like Romans 13 just to talk about how God has designed people uh, to function in that way and they really are a, a calling from God to do that. How about this? When you see a police officer, just tell them you appreciate what they do. That's a simple thing. If they're in line behind you at some store or coffee shop or whatever, just give them a shout out for that. Here's my favorite one. Maybe the next time you get pulled over for a vehicle violation, you know, speeding or missing that stop sign, uh, don't be a jerk. <laughs> that seems so simple, right? But just engage them with, with just respect and a sense of honor. Uh, they, they just appreciate that. How about this one? When someone slams law enforcement on social media, maybe you'd be willing to step up and say something. Uh, I, I, I get that there are... Um, bad employees in all elements of the industry, all industries across the planet, in every single job scope. And I know that not every cop is like the best cop, but most of them are. They're just doing the best that they can with what they have. Most law enforcement are fantastic. And so maybe you'd just be willing to step up and speak up, defend that when you see them getting slammed on social media. How about this? If you're a business owner, maybe you'd be willing to hang a sign in your business window that just says something like, we support law enforcement. Here's another idea, and maybe the biggest thing that you can remember is that you're an influencer. 
So wherever you go, whatever environments you're involved in, wherever you position yourself, you're an influencer uh, to spread your support of police in the places that you go. Uh, DeWitt Township Police Department uh, Chief Mike Gute, I had asked him, what, what would he want to communicate to North Point this morning? And this is what he texted me. And I'll just read it verbatim. He said this. He said, in the midst of everything that's going on right now, the community support towards our department and its personnel has been outstanding and it's much appreciated. People around here really have a strong sense of understanding of what we do on a daily basis, and we cannot state how much we appreciate their support. We've had masks dropped off and hand sanitizer and other items donated. This is quite a scary situation for us, going into other people's homes, taking care of things, when we can't see the silent enemy, which is the virus. I want to say good job, DeWitt. I think that's great that our local law enforcement have a sense that we are supportive. And by and large, the communities that surround us have a pretty uh, healthy support for law enforcement. But it's not that way everywhere. And so I just want to take this opportunity to say this coming week, like let's be uh, let's extra mindful. Let's think a little more. Let's figure out some ways that we can honor and appreciate law enforcement. Uh, I spent a few minutes this week uh, doing an interview with a friend of mine. He's a, a, a chaplain out in Bath, Bath Township Police Department. His name is John Moe, great guy, and I just want to share a bit of that interview with you guys right now. Check this out. Hey, North Point, um, glad you're here. Uh, this is my friend John Moe. He's with Bath Township Police Department. And uh, John, thanks for uh, just hanging out with North Point a little bit this morning. Glad to be with you guys. Hey, glad you could do it. Um, just a couple of questions. We'll just kind of chat a bit, but maybe just introduce yourself a little bit. Tell us, tell us what we should know about you. Sure. Well, I'm privileged to, uh, to serve Bath Township as a reserve uh, sworn reserve police officer. I'm their chaplain. I also work uh, with the Clinton County Special Operations Team as a chaplain and the quartermaster for the team. Nice, nice. Married, you got a, got a wife, got yep. some kids. Yep, got a great wife. I definitely married up. I've got three <laughs> kids, uh, all adults, and uh, God's been good. That's good stuff, man. So um, maybe uh, just real quickly, give us a little snippet of uh, like, why did you become a chaplain? Of all the things you could do, uh, and I know you're a small business owner, you got a lot in your plate. Why, why chaplaining? You know, I, it, that's a great question. And I, I didn't go into the, you know, the, the law enforcement service area with the mindset of being a police chaplain. But it didn't take very long for me to realize that God had uniquely positioned me to be able to serve in that capacity. And uh, I realized that uh, it, there, was, there was an opportunity. And looking over left and right shoulder, I was the guy to fill it. And uh, I've always had a, just a great respect for people in full-time ministry and so I wasn't sure that I was the guy, but uh, through a lot of prayer and thoughtful consideration, uh, I'm thankful that I'm able to minister in that capacity. Well, and I, and I know you're, some of your guys, and they say you're okay. Yeah. Maybe good, not great. I'm aspiring. We're shooting for good, not great. <laughs> hey, um, uh, you work with police officers, obviously. Uh, what What are some of the challenges that cops face or law enforcement families face? What are some of the stuff you see? You know, it's a great question, uh, Chris. Uh, there are many. Um, you know, these are just folks, just people like you and I, that that God has called to a unique position in a unique uh, 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 calling. And you know, they they um, uh, they work crazy schedules. Yeah. They are they are tasked with and trained to be critical thinkers. And uh, so, you know, some of the challenge becomes just. Even the twelve-hour shifts that they work, yeah, and being a, you know maybe having to work all night, and then how do you still uh, raise a family and be a dad and do the things that you need to do? So uh, then you know not to mention the circumstances that they have to deal with uh, just in the normal course of their job, where where a, a civilian or or you and I you know aside from work and in our role as a police chaplain, we may just choose to turn and go another way. They are tasked with responding to whatever that circumstance is, yeah. and they have to deal with that. Yeah, I, I hear a lot of our guys talking about um, uh, what they see on the job, you know, some of that darker stuff, uh, and who do they share that with? You know, they don't want to come home and tell their spouse about it because the spouse doesn't need that, right. that secondary trauma. But then what do they do with that? So a lot of them just bottle it, stuff it. Uh, you're seeing the same stuff, I'm sure. Yes. And then sometimes, especially guys... <laughs> uh, when we bottle in stuff, we just use really unhealthy coping mechanisms to try and keep that stuff uh, forced down. So yep. I'm seeing that. You're seeing that. Uh, this, this next week is uh, uh, Law Enforcement Appreciation Week, uh, Police Week. And so uh, we want to uh, talk about uh, some, some real legitimate ways to uh, appreciate or honor uh, law enforcement. Got any ideas on that? 
You know, I, I think one of the things as I, I look back at the number of years that I've been able to spend time with police officers, I think one of the things that they talk about the most is that when they, once they, they went through the academy and they were hired and sworn in as a police officer, they ceased to be, you know, just Mike or just Tom mm -hmm. or just Sherry. Mm -hmm. They now became Mike the cop, Tom the cop, Sherry the cop. And so I think that there's a great opportunity for us uh, that it, just in our normal life, you know, kids' sports teams, uh, uh, you know, just to maybe clubs that you belong to, the motorcycle club, whatever. If you have police officers that are your friends, just treat them like Tom or Mike or right. Sherry. That's good. Not, yeah. not, not the cop aspect of their life. Yeah. And just engage them because they need that connection yeah. with normal, honest, good folks. Yeah, we were just talking a minute ago off camera about how oftentimes law enforcement, uh, they don't have normal friends. Uh, all right. their friends are cops. They, 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 maybe they've married a cop. Right. Uh, and so that's kind of their very small bubble, which sometimes is a very discouraging bubble. Because yep. the people that they work with in their day in and day out is that 5% of the population that's doing criminal stuff. That's right. And uh, so that's, that's just gold, man. So just treat them like normal people. Uh, don't always ask them cop stories. Right. Maybe. I mean, they're fun. I mean, yeah. we, I like being part of them. I like hearing about them. But and they like telling them. They, they love they telling do. those stories. But maybe ask about fishing, too, or hunting, exactly. or, or crocheting, or basket <laughs> weaving. I think you're I think, into crocheting, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. It's one of your side yeah. hobbies, so... Yeah. One of your guys in, in DeWitt Township started the club. So. I do know that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was there. I don't. Never mind. Hey, anything else that you want to say to North Point, John, since you got their captive attention right now? Sure. You know, I, I think as I think about law enforcement, um, I can't help but to go into Romans uh, chapter 13, verse 4, where it talks about that that, that police officer, and it, it take a little bit to develop, but they are a minister. God's called them to a unique position. And in that verse, it says that they're a minister to thee for good. And, you know, you think about that concept of good. It's pretty common throughout all of Scripture that God, uh, that, that the word good is aligned with light. And if you go into Genesis and see where the account, the account of creation, that there was actually light before God created the sun, moon, and stars. There is actually, if you go into Revelation 22, there's a verse that says, there won't be any need for light because he is the light of that, that future world. Well, when you come back to uh, Romans, where it talks about a police officer being a minister to, uh, for good, you know, they think of that good as light, and that police officer stands be as light in this, in this evil, dark world that we live in to protect your family and our family as they're on the road. And that, that you know, we, we think about the thin blue line like on your hat yeah. there. If you take and mesh dark and light, you get a shade of gray. And I kind of believe that that thin blue line concept comes from those police officers standing in protection for you and I. So just think of those police officers, keep them in your prayer, and, uh, and, and that's the best thing that we can do for them. John, I love that. Thanks for being with us. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Hey, hey, like I said uh, before, by and large, our communities are, 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 are very pro-law enforcement, but it isn't that way everywhere. That's not the case everywhere. And you know that. If you watch media at all, if, you, if you're on social media at all, you see uh, all kinds of stuff. And, and so I just remind you that you're an influencer. We are influencers. And, and I can just tell you from my perspective that um, uh, I know from the officers that I spend time with and I talk with, they appreciate knowing that a community has their back. So even if uh, DeWitt or Bath, Langsburg, St. John's are very pro-law enforcement, uh, that's fantastic. But uh, there are other communities that may not function the same way. And, and my law enforcement folks, knowing that you have their back out there in the wider world, that's just maybe one of the most important things that you can do. It's interesting because Ephesians 5.16, it says this. It says, make the most of every opportunity. Which really lets me tell the story of how I got involved in this whole chaplain thing. I get asked this a lot. And, and so if indulge me for a couple minutes, I'll just tell you how I landed in this thing. Because I wasn't planning on doing that on a, on a, on a cold Wednesday afternoon in 2013. Um, I was, uh, we had just moved here in 2011 to Michigan from California. Didn't know anybody. Only people we were connected to uh, were, uh, were at North 
point, we were living uh, in the house on the church property. And so our entire world was, was this little, uh, you know, two-acre scenario here. And, and I don't do so well existing totally in the church bubble. So I thought, what can I do to volunteer in the community? Uh, well, I know how to tie some knots. I've done some rock climbing. So I contacted the local fire department and tried to volunteer, maybe doing some search and rescue or something like that. And the fire chief at the time for DeWitt Township called me down and, and we had a chat and he said, well, we don't do that. We don't have that kind of volunteer. He goes, what we do have is paid on call firefighters. That was the first time I ever heard that phrase where men and women who not their full-time job is firefighting, they got real jobs somewhere else, uh, get called and drop everything in a moment's notice to show up on a fire scene. And they, he said, you can do that, go back to school, become a firefighter. And I thought, yeah, that's not going to happen because there's a lot of lifting and running and breathing out and not doing all that stuff. And so I said, yeah, that's not really for me. And he said, well, actually, what the police chief and I have been talking about for a few years, we really need a chaplain. And I said, no, <laughs> which is funny. I said, I don't really want to do that. And in the back of my head, I'm thinking, I don't want to be the Jesus guy in that scenario. Does that make sense? Like the Jesus guy, you know, where like that's my whole role for being there. I mean, that is my whole role for being, but I don't want that to be like the expectation of me somehow that that, then then I get like, you know, uh, put to the side or they don't really know me as me and I don't get to have a a real relationship with the person. So I'm thinking I don't want to be the Jesus guy there. And that fire chief said, well, uh, let the police chief and I take you out for lunch and uh, let us give you the pitch at least. And I'll do anything for free food. So we did. We went to lunch and they began to unpack over that hour lunch what a chaplain role would look like. They talked about the need for someone to pay attention to the officer's mental health. And they said that, you know, they do a good job when an officer gets injured, uh, remembering to care for that officer. But they forget that that officer has family. They sometimes forget to check in on the spouse or the kids to see how they're doing. They talked about the fact that uh, with the pressures of what police officers and firefighters as, as well see in their daily job, the trauma and the junk that they have to experience, that, they, that they're expected to run into and deal with instead of running away from, uh, that stuff builds over time. Who do they talk to about those things? They really need someone they can talk to that's outside the official chain of command. Sometimes there's a fear of reprisals or something going on a permanent record that might impact a promotion or whatever later on. So they need someone they can talk to outside of that chain of command. They said that's really what the role of the chaplain is. Well, that's speaking my love language, how to connect in with mental health, how to help people, caring for families. And so I said, well, absolutely, uh, I'll do that. And, and then they gave me a badge, and at that point I was in. They'll do anything for food or, or a badge. So, so it's been seven years now since I've had the privilege of serving DeWitt Township uh, Police and then also fire as, as their chaplain, and it's really been a joy and a privilege to get to meet some incredibly skilled men and women doing the thing that God has called them to do. Uh, whether they recognize that God has called them to do that or not, God has called them to do that job and gifted them to do it well. And so here's the connection from all of that, talking about Police Week this coming week, to what we're talking about in our series this morning, this powered series out of Ephesians, is this idea right here in Ephesians chapter 5, the power of an opportunity. Let me just review where we've been over the last number of weeks. I think we're nine weeks into this. The last eight weeks, this is what we've talked about. Ephesians is really a simple book. It's really broken into two ideas. The first three chapters, chapters one through three, are all about who I am. It really is all about me or all about you. It's about who you are. Because of Jesus, not because of something wonderful you've done or something uh, smart I've done, but because of who Jesus is and what he calls us. Jesus says that, that, that we are chosen, blameless, adopted, redeemed, included, sealed, seated with God, strengthened, that we're God's innovative creation and a bunch more. That's who we are. So chapters one through three lays that out. And because then of who we are in Jesus, Chapters four through six are all about how that plays out in real life, how that happens in our everyday living. And there's examples like like being humble and patient and loving and recognizing and using my gifts or equipping, uh, putting off our old self, putting on a new self. So putting off that old self that's full of sexual immorality, impurity, greed, obscenity, a bunch of junk, and putting on a new self that, that looks like selflessness and love and thanksgiving. And then all of that drives to Ephesians chapter five, verse 15, which is where we'll start this morning. And this is what it says. It says, be very careful in how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled by the Spirit, 
speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from the Lord into your heart, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So here it is. Paul, as he begins, the, the, the author of Ephesians, Paul, as he begins to end this letter that he wrote, he makes this statement. He says, be careful then how you live. Be careful. The idea there is being watchful. Right? And this isn't a caution statement like be careful where you step or, or something like that. It's not the, the yellow caution sign you see in the middle of the store. This is really more like uh, keep your eyes open. Or uh, keep your head on a swivel. Or practice active self-awareness. Not for dangers necessarily, but for opportunities. Opportunities to live out that who you are because of Jesus. So when he starts that phrase, be careful how you live. He's not talking about being afraid or being worried or being nervous or existing in shame. He's saying, open your eyes, look around. Notice what God is doing, how he has wired you and make those things connect. Be ready to jump in when those opportunities present themselves. So then Paul goes on to describe what that careful living looks like, which is incredibly helpful. Helpful. If Paul had just stopped there and said, hey, be, be cautious, keep your eyes open, keep your head on a swivel, notice what's happening, and then didn't describe what that might look like, that, that would just be complicated. But, but he goes on to describe it, which is very cool, with three, not this, but that statements. So he says, not like this, but like this. And he has three of those statements, and we see those starting in verse 15. He says the first one there, not unwise, but wise. So not as unwise, but wise. And this would really be the, 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 the split, the dichotomy, the difference between foolish and skilled. Unwise would be foolish, and wise is this idea of skilled. Unwise is this concept of, of willy-nilly. Is that, a, is that a phrase that we use in Michigan? That might be a California word. I don't know. Willy-nilly, like random or uncontrolled or flippant. You just kind of do like whatever happens in front of you. Like that's the idea of unwise. Versus wise, which really we could translate to this sentence, forming the best plans and using the best means for their execution. So it's the different, a difference of just randomness or flippancy to really this idea of having a, uh, this, this best plan, bringing the best thinking to it, and then going after it that way. So not as unwise, but as wise. And, and he finishes that by saying, making the most of every opportunity. So not just waiting around, hoping something happens, or, or wondering what God wants you to do, and then somehow just praying that God will drop it in your lap, but rather taking initiative. So again, knowing how you're wired, how you're equipped, keeping your head on a swivel for what God is doing around you, and then marrying those two things when those opportunities pop up. And he finishes that sentence, he says, living not as unwise but wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. There's lots of ways to try and understand that phrase, days are evil, but it means more than just merely wicked. It, it certainly has that sense that, that evil is around us, but it's much larger than that. It, it can really be literally translated to mean full of labors or annoyances or hardships. So like our days are fulled, fulled? That is now a word, fulled, filled with those things, labors, annoyances, hardships. In a very physical sense, the word could mean diseased. In a, in a very ethical sense, the word could mean wicked or bad. So maybe translating it to this sentence would make the most sense is that because the days are full of wastes, things simply not worth your time. So be cautious about those things. Keep your head on a swivel. Look for the opportunities to engage where God would have you. Being careful because the days are full of lots of things that will just waste your time. Maybe an example would be like arguing on Facebook. I'm learning more and more. That might be one of those wastes. Here's the second not this but that phrase that Paul uses. He says, not foolish but understanding God's will in verse 17. Again, foolish, this idea of without reason or, or stupid or acting rashly versus understanding. Understand is this idea of to set in your mind or to perceive. And the idea here being uh, don't be without reason or haphazard, but know what God wants, what he, what he desires, what makes him happy, and chase those, those things. So we're not living in foolish ways, but rather understanding ways. The third, not this, but that phrase is this right here. He says, not being drunk on wine, 
but filled with the Holy Spirit in verse 18. Now, now, it's interesting that Paul would capture that picture of drunk with wine because I don't think it's just that that he's saying. Like those are the only two options, getting drunk or having the Holy Spirit. But I think he uses that picture drunk with wine because it's something that we can kind of wrap our heads around. We've seen those pictures. Some folks have lived that life and they know even more intimately what that means. It really is the difference between being filled with booze or, or really anything that influences you or changes you versus filled with the Holy Spirit. What controls you? That's the picture Paul is harnessing there. For the alcoholic, booze controls them. For the workaholic, work controls them. Uh, for the you fill in the blank, alec, that controls them. Paul is saying, don't be that. But be this, living this cautious, heads up, looking around, noticing what God is doing, life is all about not being influenced or controlled by these things, but rather being influenced and controlled by the best thing, the Holy Spirit. These three statements describe what it means to live carefully. And then what Paul goes on to do is break down that last statement, that being filled by the Holy Spirit rather than anything else. He really breaks that down into what the commentators called five participles, five little chunks of information that help us understand that even more. In verses 18 through 21, it's really one long sentence and it needs to be read that way. It would read like this. Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Singing and making music from your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. He lays out these five participles, right? Speaking to one another, singing, making music, giving thanks, and submitting. It really is this idea of speaking to each other, of connection, of joy, of, of love, of, of community. And maybe the, the best way to put that would be that spirit-filled Christians are people marked by joy, thankfulness, and mutual submission, Spirit-filled Christians are people marked by joy, thankfulness, and mutual submission. And really, that's the beginning. That's the start of God's will for us. We ask that question a lot. We say, like, what does God want for me? What's God's will for my life? What would he want me to do? I often pray for uh, billboards, you know, gigantic, large uh, signs of what God would have me do. And, and it's funny because often uh, the Holy Spirit reminds me, this is the start, Chris. Like, work on these things. Everything else, where should I work, who should I marry, where should I put my stimulus check, all that will will play out if I start with this. This idea of that spirit-filled Christians are people marked by joy, thankfulness, and submission. And those are things that I can control. A lot in life I can't control, I can't figure out, but I can certainly work on those things. See, Christian, we are different than the world. We look different, we act different, we smell different, we think different, we live different from the world. Not because somehow we are better than the world, but because rather we know who we are. Like Ephesians has told us who we are. God has delivered to us a description of who I am. And because of that, I live different than the world. That reality, boy, that compels us to live watchfully. Right, for the opportunities to, to let that truth just flesh out. It probably doesn't mean becoming a police chaplain. M- maybe it does. And if that's your calling, maybe give me a shout. I'll make that happen for you. But, but more than likely, there's opportunities all over that God has designed you uniquely to fill. So keep your head up. Keep your eyes open. And jump on them when they come. North Point, thanks for tuning in today. Glad you're with us. Hope your week is fantastic. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah.